Hi, this video will cover force um, and follow along with the force lecture that we do in class. Um, so these are my filled in notes that you can find online. Um, I'm just going to kind of follow along with these so you don't have to watch me fill them in and I will explain from here. Um, so a force is a push or pull in a certain direction. Um, the reason that direction part is important is because force is based off of acceleration and acceleration is based off of velocity and as we remember velocity is speed in a direction. So that's where we're getting that direction part from. We kind of have to logically work backwards through all of the equations we know to get back to that direction. So really it's a push or pull and it's going a certain way which makes sense. If you push against a desk or you push against a chair or something like that it goes in the direction that you push it. Um, assuming you are smart you are strong enough to push that desk. Um, so a force, we've been interacting with forces all of the time. You exert forces when you write, when you stand up, when you push something or someone. Those are all forces. Um, the force in terms of, you know, science that we're probably most familiar with is gravity. And gravity is a force that pulls us straight down towards the center of Earth. Um, it's also the force that aligns the stars and the planets. It's the force that was present um, in the creation of the universe and the solar systems pulling all of the matter together. Um, so gravity has to do with mass, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, exactly how that works. Um, one thing I wanted to remind you is that mass is not volume. Now that seems like a pretty self-explanatory statement. But remember that something can be very small but still have a large mass. So this is getting back to density. This is stuff you probably covered in sixth grade. Um, but, you know, what we're talking about here, and sorry about how ugly my cubes are, right? We can have... Now my cubes are, that's, wow, that's, a, some, that's one lopsided cube. You can have a cube that is one centimeter on all sides, and then you can have a cube that is two centimeters on all sides. Uh, I like totally mangled this. Oh my goodness. Look at that cube. Even worse than the first one. Sorry about that. So this cube is two centimeters on either side. So obviously this cube here, cube B versus cube A, cube B has a larger volume. This one should have gone up like that. Um, oh well, I'm just making it worse. Um, cube B has a much larger volume than cube A. However, cube A might have a weight, if we're going to talk in terms of weight, or rather, I'd rather talk in terms of mass, so it might have a mass of 20 kilograms, or this one only has a mass of 10 kilograms. So this is a pretty big box that we're talking about here. However, it has a lower mass than box A, which means that box A is more dense. That's just a reminder that just because something is big or something is small doesn't mean that it has a large or small mass. So we don't want to use the adjectives, oh, it's big or oh, it's small. Well, it has a small mass or it has a big mass. Um, size is not the same thing as mass. So when we're talking about units, um, we want to use the, the unit of newtons. So one kilogram has a weight of 9.8 newtons. Um, our equation for force is F equals M times A, which makes sense. A force is a push or pull. And you push or pull an object. Objects have mass. So that's your object. And this is your movement. Right, you accelerate that object in a certain direction due to the force that you apply to it. So if we're back over here and we're talking about weight, weight is the mass times the acceleration. In this case, we're talking about acceleration due to gravity, right? Because the force that is being exerted on something when we're talking about its weight is the force of gravity. Um, if you think about whether you're on the moon or whether you're on Earth, you are going to have different weights on the moon versus on Earth because there's a different gravitational pull. However, your mass would stay constant. Um, so I've got a good video on what is weight and weight is force due to gravity. Um, so if you want more information on that, please head to my YouTube. Um, so to get into kind of the specifics of different types of forces, a net force is the combination of all forces acting on an object. If you push 
and pull with equal force, it's not going to move. Right? If you're playing tug of war on the beach and you've got two teams that are pulling equally in opposite directions, they are both exerting a really, really big force. However, the net force cancels each other out. So we've done work with something before that we can use again. We can use vectors. So if I have a force going in this direction of 10 newtons, and a force going in this direction of 10 newtons, those two forces are going to subtract from each other. They're going in opposite directions. They're going to make zero. If we had them going in the same direction, you know, something like this, 10 newtons and 10 newtons, that would add together and make 20 newtons. So we can use vectors again. Remember, anything that has velocity as its basis can be used with vectors. And since we're talking about force uh, force equals mass times acceleration, and acceleration is based on velocity. There we go. Um, so one word that you might hear a lot in terms of force is equilibrium, and that's when the net force is zero. So like in this case, until one team gets another big strong person, um, the equilibrium, or there is equilibrium. There is no net force. So another example is if you have a book on a desk. Right, you put the book on the desk, and where does it go? It goes nowhere. It's not going to go smashing through the desk onto the floor and then through the floor down to the center of the earth. It's actually just going to sit on the desk. And that's because the desk is actually exerting an upwards force. Okay? Um, I'm going to skip down a little bit here, but that upwards force is called normal force. So when you put something on a desk or on a table or on the floor and your expectation is that that object is going to stay there and not fall through the floor, you are expecting the normal force of that surface to push back up and fight gravity. Um, interestingly, if I put a book on a desk and the desk collapsed under the weight of the book and the book went flying through the floor, that would be pretty interesting we would see that no longer could that desk and the floor support the weight, right there for the mass times the acceleration, of that book. It could not exert a normal force strong enough to support the book, which means that that book would then just keep crashing through floors. It would have to be a very, very, very heavy, right, high mass, very heavy object um, to beat the normal force of the floor, for instance. Um, that's why I've got this example, Fat Calman Breaks a Chair. Right? If I go on an, you know, an, an eating binge and I end up weighing 500 pounds and I sit down at my normal desk chair and all of a sudden the desk chair explodes under me and breaks and I fall because of gravity. So my weight, force due to gravity, um, is greater than the normal force of the chair. I would break the chair. That's what we would see. Um, so kind of to head back up here to equilibrium, when that doesn't happen, when you put the, the book down or you sit in the chair and nothing happens, you just sit there, the, you are at equilibrium. There is no net for, or there is a net force of zero, right? Um, so when you have balanced forces, that's when you're going to have equilibrium. When one force is moving in this direction, one force is going in that direction, or I'll give you another example, we could have this and that of 10 newtons and 10 newtons, and those are going to cancel each other out, right? That would be two people pushing on a desk from either side. If they're pushing on a desk from either side with equal force, unless the desk breaks, it's not going anywhere. Um, so balanced forces, there will be no acceleration. However, when, there is, when an object is not balanced by another force, the object is going to accelerate. So if we took away this force, all of a sudden, that object, you know, let's say there's an object right here, that object is going to start accelerating off in that direction because you no longer have a balancing force which would make the net force zero or make it be at equilibrium. Instead, you just have one force, and that one force is moving in this direction, and therefore the object will go in that direction. Um, so an example of this is gravity pulling us down but the earth and floor pushing us back up. So it's not really that there's no net force, it's really that the net force equals zero, right? Um, if you jump from a building, for a while, you have an unbalanced force. Only gravity is pulling you down. However, at a certain point, you're going to hit another object, and that other object, the ground, is going to exert an upward force against your body. And unfortunately for you, the ground has 
enough mass and therefore enough force to be able to exert more than enough normal force on your body and you will break, right? You don't expect the ground to suddenly break beneath you and you to keep traveling through the earth. Instead, the ground is going to hold steady and you're going to be the thing that breaks. Um, so your normal force will not be able to overcome the force of the floor, unfortunately. Um, so down here we talk again about how you know force can have vectors. It can have a size, meaning the newtons, right? Five newtons, ten newtons, twenty newtons, and a direction, meaning it's going to the left, it's going to the right. That's why we like something like that. Um, the unit of force to recap is newtons, and the equation is F equals m times a. So one very interesting thing that we need to talk about is the cause of acceleration is force. So all of the things that we've been learning about so far acceleration, velocity, speed, etc. All of that starts up because of a force, right? There's no way that you're going to have motion without a force. Um, so you put a force on that little rolling green cart. The force that we were putting on it was gravity, right? We have um, gravity acting on that green cart and it moves towards the ground. If we pushed it, that would be an additional force. Um, so one, you know, and this makes sense, force causes acceleration. Basically, if we increase the force, we're going to increase the acceleration, right? If the object stays the same, if we're kicking a soccer ball and I give it a small force, we're going to have a small amount of acceleration. However, if I'm kicking that soccer ball and I give it a big force, we're going to have a big acceleration. That's because realistically, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a direct relationship, right? We're looking at a, multi a relationship based on multiplication. So if F goes up and mass stays exactly the same, acceleration also has to go up, right? That just kind of makes sense. Um, if we're assuming mass is staying the same, we're kicking the same soccer ball. Um, since it's a direct correlation, it's, it's multiplication. If one goes up, the other goes up. Um, so this is recapping that acceleration is directly proportional to net force, meaning that your acceleration goes up if your net force goes up. If the force acting on it is doubled, the acceleration doubles, assuming you have the exact same ob object, right? If you go from a soccer ball to a bowling ball and you're trying to kick the two of them and they have different masses, not only will it hurt your foot, but you're not going to be able to accelerate it as much, um, which gets into point, if this is point number one, that gets us into point number two. Mass resists acceleration. So what I mean by that is if you have a soccer ball versus a bowling ball, which one is easier to accelerate? The soccer ball is a lot easier to kick or to throw or really just to get moving in general. The bowling ball weighing something like 13 pounds, I don't really like talking in terms of pounds, so that would be something around um, six kilograms, right? That's a pretty heavy ball. You're not going to be able to throw that very far. You're not going to be able to throw that very fast. You're not going to be able to kick it much at all because you're going to break your foot. So mass resists acceleration. So if we think about this equation, if we have, you know, the same force, if the force stays the same, but the mass goes up, what has to happen to our acceleration? If force has stayed the same, that means that our acceleration is going to have to go down. Because this is multiplication, if we change something over here, either of these two can go up. But if this stays the same, no change there, and this goes up, this one has to go down to keep the statement true. So for instance, if we're going to have a force of 10 newtons, and you're going to have a mass of, you know, an original mass of 1 kilogram, it's going to accelerate at 10 meters per second per second, right? Because 1 times 10 is 10. If you're keeping the force the same, 10 newtons, but we're going to increase that mass, 10 kilograms, 10 times. To keep the statement true, what do we have to multiply by our acceleration, right? In order to keep that statement, this, this equation true, we've got a 10 here, this has to be 1. So as you can see, our acceleration has decreased because our mass has gotten bigger. So acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. And this is something that, wow, okay, this makes sense mathematically and we get this and it sounds all scientific, but we know that, right? If you pick up a, um, a bowling ball or if you pick up a table, right, it's going to be a lot harder to accelerate a big, huge table or a car than it is to accelerate a tennis ball. 
and that's because of its mass. We have to exert a greater force if we want to get it to accelerate more. But if we're keeping the same force and the mass is what's changing, our acceleration goes down. Um, so this is a lot of information. We'll, do, we'll talk about it some more in class. Please let me know if you have, it, have any questions.